You are listening to a recording from Shepherd's Grace Baptist Church, located in Sandpoint, Idaho. We invite you to come and join us as we rightly divide the word of truth and encourage one another through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this morning, we're going to talk about our minds. I don't have a very good one, but some of you have pretty sharp ones. We, last time I spoke about our walk, that was a year ago. Most of you weren't here. Maybe Robert. I was here. And maybe Holly. Were you here for the... Uh, congregation's changed a lot since then. Yeah, yeah things have changed. And um, I really... And then pray for folks. So you don't even know some of the folks that aren't around. And they're around. They're just not in here. And I... It breaks my heart that they're not because um, I'm not going to say name it, but just pray for folks that you know you haven't seen in a while and they really should be back. And uh, we miss them and I pray for them and I try to encourage them. But, you know, you could lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So, And maybe we're going to talk about our minds today. But we're left, last, uh, left off last time with walking with God. And it started in the Old Testament. And I went all the way through. And I didn't get to this ending where we're going to start today. Because it went from our walk and then our minds. and there's, it, It's all really tied together. And it's all in the Bible. I'm not a scholar by any means. But the Bible is the Bible. And if we follow it and love it and read it and let it sink into us, it will change us, and it will guide us, and our, it will guide our walk, it will guard our minds, it will guard our hearts, it will. It's all there, it's all powerful, because God wrote it for us, so that we could walk why, rightly, and in our right minds. There's a lot, the Bible says, I'm going to tippy touch on the mind but if you do a mind search of everything where it talks about your mind and your thoughts and the thoughts of your heart the bible has a lot to say about it and um i dug just a little bit and found a whole lot here so we're gonna turn to the book of colossians chapter one So, our minds prior to conversion, prior to receiving the Lord, we thought differently, didn't we? We minded different things. So, minding different things, you kind of that was your mindset. Your so mind is it's you have a mind, but then your mind minds things. It thinks about things, and pretty much everything starts in the mind. So, we are in Colossians 1, verse 21. Do you want us to read this together? Sure, we can. We're just reading verse 21. And And you, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have been reconciled. So, we've been reconciled, but we used to have some pretty wicked minds. And you know... The old mind can still creep back. So you have to guard your mind. And we'll get more into that a little later. But we had wicked, our minds were wicked. Our heart is desperately wicked and who could know it? That's another, I don't have the adjective, but that's another, our, our mind and our heart is tied together in the Bible. Your mind and your heart are kind of, well, they're connected without your heart. To put blood in there, nothing. That mind's going to last about three minutes, so not much uh, longevity there. So then, we were we were enemies. Our minds were really messed up. So next, we will go 
to Ephesians 2. Two, verse 2 and 3, and this is where I was supposed to end last year, was going to end on this verse. So we're going to read 2 and 3. Is everybody there? Wherein, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But wait, there was an answer. I'll just read the next verse. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. So he saved us. We, we, for, we were disobedient. We were backslidden. We walked according to it. We we weren't clean. We were just followed our minds, which were full. So the world and the flesh follow it, it. The world gets into your mind through your eyes and through your ears and through what things you do. It permeates it, it, and then your mind. You get a mindset of that, and you think it's normal. Because everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is that way. But when Christ comes in, you're a new creature. But if you keep filling your mind with all of the old things, you're going to have a lot of struggles and a lot of troubles. And we're going to have, we're going to have persecution. That's a guarantee if you're living godly. But, and you know, the persecution today, I feel, is the battle for your mind. We have, there's some, but we're not in the Middle East. We're not getting that kind of persecution this day. But our, I believe, our, personally for me, because I'm speaking for my, from my heart and for myself, and the battle of the mind and the, is the battle of the day. Because the mind is tied to the heart, and that's tied to what you're, what you're thinking on. What's in your mind is what you're going to do. And then that is your, affects your what? Your walk. So it's really hard to walk with God when you're minding the things of the world, and, and who's the prince of that? We all know from Scripture. It's a, been a really battle. The battle of the mind. Did you hear about the old Indian guy that got saved? And he says, I have two dogs that fight in my mind. They fight all the time. They're mean dogs. Wild dogs. And the pastor says, well, who wins? And he says, whichever one I feed the most. Heard that from an old preacher long ago but it's really that's a good one so we were enemies in our minds we were we we didn't have the right mind so if we look at the the bible it has lots to say about it so if we go to ephesians now just turn over a couple pages here that we turn to four chapter four of ephesians in verse 17 And we're going to read 17 through 23. A little bit of reading, but it's very, it's very good. I mean, we could make a whole sermon on these verses. 
you could you could dig into this and I encourage you to dig in later into some of these verses and do I love word searches and I, I know a pastor does too and I've never met anyone like him that we're so like-minded on that that we love to take a word in the Bible and just search it out from cover to cover and find out where it's all used and how it's used and what it I, I, it's weird I just love to do it so uh, we're going to start in verse 17 and read through 23 if everybody's there this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walked in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling, giving them themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, and so be that ye heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I can't resist 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. We didn't create it. We were created at conversion according to God's holy, perfect word. He gives us this as our manual for life. So has anybody ever tried to fix something? I fix things every day. And there's a little part that everybody skips in diagnostics. Nobody reads description and operation. So this will tell you how the component, it describes what it does and then how it does it. There's protocols. If this thing isn't over, especially with the computers now, if this thing over here isn't saying it's okay, the part won't do what it's supposed to. But it's not the part's fault. It's because something over here is glitching, and now the computer, which is what? Your mind, it's the, it's the, it's the equipment, whatever you're working on is mind. The washing machine has a mind. Everything has a mind. Nothing is just, you know, simple. It won't do it. And you, you change this part and you get zero results. Mm -hmm. Because over here, something was messed up. And so we go back to the Bible and we find out where we're, this book tells us where the glitch is. Mm -hmm. If you will search and you'll look, you'll find it. You'll go back and you'll say, hey. And, and, and uh, another old saying. In your Bible, you'll see, in my Bible, you'll see a T and a P next to a verse. You know what that stands for? Tried and proven. Brother Jason, he's got it, man. Um, it works if you, if you work it. But you got to do it. So we were, this, like I said, this is a, this, these verses we read, that's a whole study right there. But we got more... There's more verses. We could really, I mean, this goes on and on. So our minds, how are we going to do this? What is our, uh, what, what are the keys to all this? We just got to keep digging. So if we go to Philippians, now just a little bit over. And now we're going to start getting some keys and some tidbits and some, some guidance to get this mind that we're supposed to have. Because it's all in the Bible. We just got to look for it. And it's really right there. Um, not very hard at all. If I can find this, anybody can find it. Because I am no scholar for sure. All right, we're going to Philippians chapter 1, 
verse 27. Everybody's there? We good? Mm-hmm. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, and you stand fast in one spirit and in one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. If everybody's to get together, and their minds are stayed on the Bible and the right thing, we're not going to care about what color the floor is and what, you know, this, well, brother so-and-so, he just doesn't really smell very good, or, you know, or brother so he's kind of crazy. We've had some people that um, are a little off, but, you know, they came, and I'm hoping they heard the word, and I'm hoping that it helped them. And, uh, you know, it made us all a little uneasy at times. And you kind of, you got to keep your, you can't be foolish. But at the same point, we don't want to be mean and, and, and have a spirit of, of you know, yeah. looking down and, you know, not accepting. Just yeah. being too good. That turns a lot of people off towards churches. Yeah. And, and yes, we got to be, uh, what is is. Uh, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Yeah, just, just we got to have that discernment, and that comes with time, and through the word, and yielding to the spirit. So, mind yeah, with one mind. So we are supposed to be like-minded. Now, are we supposed to be like-minded in the traditions of men? Absolutely not. Are we supposed to be what some? Guy from some seminary says, no, we're supposed to be like-minded in the author of this book. So, if we just turn over a little bit more, and we're going to end up in Philippians 2, verse 3. Everybody there? Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, letting nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now, you'll never be able to fulfill the second half of this verse if... You're high-minded, and you're proud, and you think you're better than everybody else. Because we are proud critters. I mean, that's just like built into all of us. I really, It's really easy. That's something that has to, the Holy Spirit has to change that. Because by nature, we're proud, stubborn folks. And he is king over the children of pride. Yes, he is. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Amen. That wasn't even the here, but that's the second half of the verse. But being he's he's Paul's writing this and he says, fulfill my joy. He want he hears back from his in his travels and all these little churches he started. And he wants to hear that they are standing fast in the word, in the Lord. See, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. You can't be in accord if there's strife. You can't be in accord if there's clicks. I don't see a click in this church. I've been in churches that had major clicks and it is not healthy and it is not good and it does not promote godliness and you can have all the people in and out all you want. You know, coming and going and here and and this click over here and this click over here and they see this stuff and that's why they don't stay. And now you'll always have people come and go. But when you get a group that is like-minded and they're in one accord, there's no telling what God can do with all of that. And it's, you know, there's all these, this battle for your mind, the the pride, arrogance, all, all these things that we're supposed to be putting off as we grow in Christ. Those things come in 
and chip away at that one accord, having the same what? Love. Now that's a key. Without love, all of this is a waste. If you don't have love one toward another and to for the lost, this is just a waste of time, really. And I'll tell you, our pastor loves us. I'm, I'm, I'm tooting his horn again. He's not here. He won't toot his own horn. I'm, he just doesn't do it. He'll toot. He, he'll, the word of God, he'll proclaim to the, But he doesn't toot his own horn. And uh, I'm going to do it for him because he won't. But he is, he's a good, he has a good mind. He teaches us very sound doctrine, very wellly. That's not a good word. See, I told you I'm not educated. <laughs> I'm a mechanic. I started working when I was 17, and uh, I should have finished school. So. You do. Wasn't a, wasn't a smart thing. Now we're going to move just a couple verses down. And this is the whole key, if you don't take anything else away from all of this babble that I've given you today, this is what I want you to remember, and this is what I want you to focus on, because this is the key to this whole message. And we're, there's more, but this is a, the crucial, this is that, that part of the, uh, the operating system, the, the prerequisite to having it work, that one thing that won't let the part work, this is it. So we're on verse 5 of Philippians 2. Let's all read this one together loud and clear. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Wow. That's a tough call, isn't it? So all this like-mindedness that the Bible has to talk about and all of it to be, it's in that verse ties. That's the key to it all. Because without the mind of, we're supposed to be like-minded in Christ, not the traditions of men, not all these things that this guy from the seminary says. Christ. And where do we find the words of Christ? And where do we find that mind of Christ? In the word. This is a love letter he wrote us. Now, if you love somebody, you're going to tell them when they're wrong. You're going to tell them when they, you know. So it's, it's, there's some spanking in here. But there's also, there's lots of good, there's, there's encouragement in here. There's mercy. There's grace. And there's chastisement. It all has to come together. If you never chastise your kid, you don't love them. There's no love there. Because you're just like, ah, oh, whatever. Whatever's going to happen. I've heard this one by frustrated parents many a time. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And that comes from Calvinism, by the way. Be careful. He that spareth the rod hated his son. Yes. But he that loveth the son chasteneth him the times. He nailed it. That's the verse. So, I get it. You know, think of this. So let this mind be this is Christ Jesus. This mind was in Christ. This is the mind of Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has also highly hath all <clears throat> excuse me God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. And we all know the rest of that one. But he humbled himself. See, there's lots of things. So read always a little bit before and a little bit uh, backwards get your context this is how verses get taken out of context this is how doctrines get messed up we don't look at what else the bible has to say before and after it we just discount all that cherry pick i'm the worst one i i really despise this one but there is like there's two part verses like the one like verse three was 
uh, having having uh, the, the lowliness of mind so you can esteem others better. There is stuff like that, but people will take a half verse <laughs> and form a doctrine. Yeah. And it's completely out of context. But I've seen it. Oh, I've seen sermons on half verses. And I really don't care for it. I, I love the way our pastor always had. He's the Bible machine gun. He has. And they're all in his head. I don't know how he does it. He memorizes all this stuff. When he's up here quoting away, you got to remember. He's. Well, when he was younger, he read it. But it's been a, probably 10 or 15 years since he's been able to read the Bible. He listens to it. And he meditates and memorizes it. It's just unreal how he can do that. Because I can't, I'm getting really senile. I'll put down a tool and walk and come back and I can't remember where I put it. Just ask my kids. I blame them. <laughs> but they have done it. They, they do do it. So they're just white. They're fair game. I don't know how he remembers stuff like that. So... That mind of Christ. So the battle starts in where? The mind. the mind. It always starts in the mind. Rarely, rarely. Once in a while, somebody just gets snared and falls and has a bad day or whatever. But usually most major sins, most major problems, like a pastor or even or someone, even anybody in that you will have, it usually starts in their mind. They start straying in their mind. They start putting the wrong things in their mind. They start thinking on it, thinking on it, thinking on it. And eventually they're going to act. Because yeah. if you keep thinking about it, eventually you're going to do it. So you got to fight that battle of your, in your mind and put on that mind of Christ. And how do you put his mind on? Get in his word. Dig deep. Get in there. Because that battle... At the end of the day, that battle for your mind is a big one. The tempter always, what did he do? With, he took Jesus up on the mountain. He took Jesus up on the pinnacle. He took Jesus, when he was starving, turned these stones into bread. He was tempting him in, in his mind. He start, the devil gets, in, he works on the mind. He is a mind manipulator. He's not a mind reader because he's not God, but he's been around a really long time and he's fooled a lot of people. So he's really good at it. So he can't read your mind. God knows your thoughts. He's not God. He's created. Yeah. But he's smarter than we are. You got to give credit where credit's due. And he's crafty and he's, and there's a lot of work. Do that search. Knowledge and wisdom, but no understanding. But do that search on... Um, be beguiled. That's an old word. I don't even know if it's in the new versions. Is it? I mean, I doubt it. Um, beguiled. How can you take beguiled out of the Bible? I mean, that's just, you look and, and it starts way back in Genesis. That, that's right. And he's been doing it. We know from Genesis, beginning of Genesis, all the way through. And he's still doing it today, and he's only gotten better at it. Because what do you do if you're going to try to win a race or win a competition? You practice. And he's still fighting. He's still go he, wants, he wants that fight for your minds. He wants you. So he can't get your soul now if you're sealed. If you are born again, your soul is sealed. But he can get you... To stumble and fall and mess up. And he can ruin your life. Even as a Christian, you can... That's what I'm saying. I think the, the main battle of the day here is for our minds and for our hearts. The world in this country. We're not being threatened to have our head chopped off because we met today. We're not going to be arrested. And thrown. Do you know that they can't sing in the churches in China? The underground churches and people... If they sing, their neighbors will turn them in and the... Police come, or whatever their authorities are called there, and they put them in prison. And those prisons are, they're not our prisons. They're, you know, here it's the running joke. I work for the sheriff's department. It's three hots and a cot. You, it's not really, it's pretty cushy. You get three square meals a day and a nice cushy bed. 
And yeah, you're in there with a bunch of, you know, not so desirable, but they're usually they're not so desirable, but the people that are all kind of, that go in there all the time. But our prisons aren't like there. We don't, the persecution I believe here is for our minds. And if it get and for the minds of our children, for the minds of our spouses, they just, the, the world and the devil, he's just constantly bombarding our minds with wicked things. So now let's skip on over to Philippians 4, 7. Actually, I think I want to start up at 4 because... This is such a such good reading right here. Um, it goes a little out. It gives just context to it. So let's start in verse four. And we've all heard this one. In fact, my kids even used to sing. They had a little song they sung with the uh, scripture songs. I would encourage anybody with kids sing the Bible. Other songs are fine. They're not bad. But if you can sing scriptures with your kids, put a little tune to it. It makes them memorize it. And it's really, really good. And that helps the battle for their minds. So here we go. Verse 4. Everybody together. Rejoice Rejoice in the the Lord Lord always. always. And And again again I say rejoice. rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is is at hand. Be Be careful for for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, we're going to go through uh, nine. We'll go on through nine. And finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which both learned, received, and heard, and seen in me do, and the gospel shall be with you. Now, isn't that a, there's a whole sermon right there. We just read a mouthful. We just, th- this is, th- when they're up in Alaska and they're digging for gold, this is the big nugget right here. This isn't, this isn't that little, or that one. See, I found that, you know, and look at your friend showing you his little fleck of gold. This isn't a fleck. This is a nugget. This is a big one. Look at all this in here. What These things, so... We're going to, he's going to keep our hearts and minds. And then we want to, these things are what we focus on. We've got lovely, good, virtue, praise, honest, true. I mean, just think of just. These are all the attributes of who? Yes. So that's his mind. See, it's in. He'll give you his mind. You got to look for it, though. You got to want it. You got to ask for it. He'll never deny it. He'll always give it to you. But he wants you just, he wants you. If, if you don't work for something, that's what the problem with uh, welfare is. People don't work for anything, so they don't appreciate it. Some people need help. I'm not against that whatsoever. But when you're perfectly able-bodied and there's absolutely nothing wrong with you and you just sit there and do nothing and take free, then you don't care about the house. You don't care about anything. You don't care about anything because you didn't work for it. When you work hard for something and you save your money and you buy it or you make those Horrible bondage payments. We need a new car. Really, really badly. Well, I'll never buy a new car. but I need one that doesn't have 300,000 miles on it. 
but I just refuse to go into debt because those, you know, the first year or first few months, it's all great in this car. And then it starts to get a little older. And those payments, they just become bondage. And then you finally get done with it. And you're just like, now you, I mean, you're happy. It's like this burden is lifted because you put yourself into that bondage. And when you sign the thing, no matter how bad of a decision you made and no matter how, you've got to pay it back. And it's terrible. I hate car payments. Oh, I'm not telling you you don't do... I just... This is personally for me. I hate it. And also, I'm really cheap. So. <laughs> it's almost a challenge. How long can I make this thing last? So Sometimes it's stubbornness. But... Oh, I, I'm way over the line, trust me. So, we need to dig for these things. We need to earn... God, when you dig for it and you find it, he rewards you. There's a reward for digging into the book. There's a reward because he wants you to find it. These aren't hard to find either. This, isn't, this didn't take much digging at all. I, got, I mean, this is, I almost walked up and saw it shining in the brook here. I mean, these are right in, these are easy to find. So, let's skip over to Colossians. And find out um, where we started here. And find out, remember, we got all this good stuff. And he says, you are enemies in your mind by wicked works. So was there any wicked works in what we just read? No. 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 So if we stay away from those works, we're not going to quench that spirit. And we're not going to... That If your mind is on fire for these good things... You certainly don't want to put that out. But the devil's out there with a big fire hose and he's wanting to extinguish these things because he wants you to mind wicked things and do wicked works. Because therefore, then he goes, he's just like with Job. Um, he goes to God. Have you seen your servant Job? Have you seen your servant John? Oh, that guy, he ain't no good of a dad. He, he He's... Does this? It does that. He's up. He's always the accuser of the brethren. He's always just out there to get us. We have an adversary, and he's for real, and he wants your mind. So let's skip over now, backwards. We're not going to skip over. We're going to skip back to Romans twelve sixteen. When do we stop this? Quarter till, ten Quarter till? till? Uh, was okay. there a verse in Colossians you wanted us to look at? We're, we're looking at the one, uh, was 121. We're just, we're right there on the next, well, my Bible, it was right there on the next page. Mm -hmm. And that's where we started. Yes. So okay. remember, we, we had some, there, there's goods and bad ways to, of your mind. But we were right there and I'm like, kind of threw it in. It wasn't in my notes, trust me. Um, I just saw it over there and couldn't resist commenting on it one more time because he wants us back in that state. He wants you right back in that state that you were when you got saved or worse. Mm -hmm. That's the devil's goal. That's the world. That's the system. The world system's goal is to keep you down, to keep you constantly defiled, to keep to win the battle for your mind. And it's a tough, it's, it's a constant battle. It never lets up. I, I, it'll let up when the bodies are glorified. When we go up, that battle lets up. Till then, we're in the battle. Remember, Paul says, fight the good fight. So we've got a few more verses. The church, and not the church triumphant. Amen. So we're in Romans 12, 16. another verse on like-mindedness are we all there yep. be of the, of the same, same mind, mind one toward another, another. Mind, mind not high things but consent to men of low estate be, be not, not wise in your own conceit and i already beat that one up when talking about being nice to you know men of low estate so the poor looking ratty guy that slept in his tent last night. We should be nice to him. 
Um, now, if he's violent, I mean, there's a point where we have to draw the line. But as long as he's behaving himself to the best of his ability, you know, he's not causing trouble or creeping out anybody, totally doing, you know, bad stuff. We should love him and try to minister to that fellow. So, move over to chapter 15 of Romans. Another, another good verse here on like-mindedness. That ye may with one mind and one mouth by God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, there's a lot of things that are done that are supposedly glorifying God today, and I'm not going to pick on a whole lot of other people. But they're, you're taking the you're using the methods of the world, you're using worldly methods to glorify God, and that's not really the best thing to do. And they say it's God, so I'll just leave that one. You can do your own research on that one, but there's a lot of weird stuff out there. And we're running totally out of time. Let's skip over to 1 Peter So, verse 13 of 1 Peter 1 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts of your ignorance. Because the Bible is not going to fill you with ignorance. It's going to make you smarter. Because I'm not very smart. And anything I got and anything I'm giving you today, that's just because of the grace of God in this book. It's not from me. It's not my smartness. Now we're going to go over to 2 Peter. 3 1. And if uh, I'll have you all just read that one real good here. Ready? Three one. Second epistle. I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Keep re go ahead and read through uh, four. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall, shall come in the last day scholars, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And one of my favorite verses, For this they are willingly ignorant. You know what that says in the Greek? Dumb on purpose. That's not really true. <laughs> but it sounds funny, doesn't it? They are willingly ignorant. So how did they get willingly ignorant? They got that out of their mind. So they're because the mind controls their will. So 
So we're going to end back in Colossians, and we'll read this really quick. And this really isn't about your, well, it's kind of on your mind. We're going to be in Colossians 4, verse 4. Because your mind is affecting your walk. Are we ready? Four, ver, Colossians 4, 4. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. And we're going to keep going. Go through 9. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. And all my state shall take his declare unto you, who is a beloved brother, faithful minister, and a fellow servant of the Lord, whom I might have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. With the Onesimus, faithful little brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all the things which are done here. So, he is encouraging, the, he wants to, them to be encouraged in their walk, to walk in wisdom. These men have been examples to them. These men have been encouragements to them. They are ministering. They're, they've walked with the apostle. They've been with the apostle Paul. And he just wants to know that they're walking in these ways. So we put on that mind of Christ and we walk. And at the end of the day, I pray that you would sing about, read about, seek out, receive, hear, see, the things that are in the Bible, that are good, the things that we read about. Because at the end of the day, who will win the battle for your mind? Let's pray. Lord, I pray that we guard our minds, keep our minds, purify our minds with your word, and that we would be kind one toward another, show the love of Christ in all that we do, and be an example to those that are without, like I said, season our speech with the salt, but also mix that with love. Help us not to be harsh, but help us not to be uh, compromising either. Just We just pray these things in Jesus' name, that we could walk closer to you, and that we could guard our minds against the devil and all of his uh, tricks and things that he does to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to a recording from Shepherd's Grace Baptist Church. Please visit us at www.shepherdsgrace.org for more information.